Well, I suppose the uh, determination is more or less what the duties are, and I am, I guess, technically a street reporter meaning that I do not sit in the station in front of a microphone and talk all day, but I'm out. As it happens, my street beat includes a lot of being in the side of another building next to a microphone. But uh, for the purpose of classification, street reporter. My primary assignment is City Hall in San Francisco. I cover the Board of Supervisors, and because they work in the afternoons and evenings, I work in the afternoons and evenings. But at any moment when I'm working, the phone could ring and they could say, we have three alarm fire, we have a hostage situation, go. So the company provides an automobile for that purpose, equipped with a two-way radio and all the other little goodies to make it possible to uh, cover outside events. I guess the fundamental goody that I have as a tool in the trade is uh, the telephone. I uh, do all of my reports over the telephone. I am almost never in the studio, uh, so there's just simply uh, no other way of getting on the air quickly, neatly, and efficiently except by telephone. There are nine eyes, two nose. I keep uh, tape recorders here at City Hall for recording these meetings and I, I always thought of them as a time machine because I am the one that sits through the long boring meetings and gets tired and my bottom hurts and uh, then we condense what they really did down into a few seconds of a report. Service on weekends along the Embarcadero on adoption. These great heavy social issues of our time. I often wondered if people realize how lucky they are <laughs> when they hear a report on the air because the debate can cover some of the most god-awful, boring information. There are ten eyes. Resolutions adopted. So there is an incredible amount of time spent on, uh, from the standpoint of a journalist, nonsense. Uh, obviously the wheels of government move in their mysterious ways, endlessly sometimes. So we sit through that and then we condense them down. Uh, there is a tendency to use the most stupid or the most inflammatory remark made by a public official, which I am ever watchful for. And it has now become something of a game. The board president will even, after somebody has said something particularly inane, the board president will say, well, we're going to hear that on KCBS tomorrow morning. And we make sure that they do. They will, without objection, uh, items 24 and 25 will be held uh, for a short period until representative of the planning commission arrives. Well, today, uh, the one day we have picked to take a look at what the supervisors did was an extremely unusual meeting in that it ran only until uh, after a little after three o'clock, not up till four o'clock. Their all-time record is uh, starting at two o'clock in the afternoon and ending at 2.25, but that was many years ago. So right, Rosie, would you stay Yeah, the tricky to file indicates that this was... Today, they uh, managed to do that short meeting by skipping a commitment to anything that was on the calendar. They didn't really vote on anything significant. The items they did vote on, such as the self-service gas stations, uh, was a matter that it's already been fought over and voted on last week. This was just the required second and final reading. Mr. President, members, um, my understanding is that uh, from February 1st, 1965 on, and please someone, uh, either from staff or So it takes a considerable here, amount of listening, note-taking, and then re-listening to see what you really heard in order to do the reports. ...about that from February 1st, 1965 on, that uh, it was possible... The meetings sometimes run very late, and, uh, and that except was, for the... Uh, uh, in such a way that sort of hit and run reports that I would do during the day. The real work begins after the meeting is all over because then we have a, a parameter we can tell, or I can tell anyway, what the uh, major stories might be out of the board meeting. 
there are usually quite a number. As a matter of fact, there's usually more material that can be covered. So then it becomes a job of deciding what is most interesting to people, not necessarily what's most important. That's the rule I use anyway for determining the journalistic appeal of something. Why don't we do a live report on a developing story? Uh, no. Have to be okay by the commission. Governor Brown's rent is going up $100 Dolls. a month. The building in which he lives Dolls. is owned by the Department of General Services, which bases rents on a survey of what's being charged for comparable Brown's buildings in the area. Now, Brown and the building's Brown. other tenants have been told that their rent is going up Brown. from $275 to right. $375 a month. KCBS News Time, 319. So here is a live report on a developing story. Jim Hamblin at San Francisco City Hall, where the wheels have been set in motion, if you'll pardon that expression, for re-establishing some bus service along the Embarcadero. This past summer, with the increased activity because of Pier 39 and other waterfront developments, San Francisco was in a real bind with respect to moving automobiles through the Embarcadero. Right at the height of that bind, the Muni Transit System pulled the shuttle buses out of the system, claiming they did not have enough money to operate them anymore. Board of Supervisors President John Molinari, whose district includes Fisherman's Wharf in that area, has asked the supervisors to ask the mayor, to ask the Public Utilities Commission, to ask the Muni Railway System to put that shuttle bus back. And the first stage of that has now been approved by the supervisors, the request to the mayor. If it goes into effect, it would mean that people could park at such places as the SP terminal and take a special bus over to Pier 39 or Fisherman's Wharf and enjoy themselves for part of the day instead of spending all day looking for a place to park. Jim Hamblin, San Francisco. KCBS News Time, 322. The material is all written. I have a tendency to ad lib the live reports simply because they're happening now. I know what they did and uh, the theory is that I'm able to talk and put one word after the other and get it all out. But in the overnight material I write it simply because it's going to sound better if I do. And it also locks in what I've said about one thing and then I uh, line up probably seven or eight reports before I call the station and then they uh, they tape those reports, and if they need editing, they will do that. A decision made by the reporter, by the way, not by anybody else. And then they're put onto those endless tape cartridge things and used the next morning. With the uh, facsimile machine we have, I not only do the whole report, but I also even type up the labels for them at the station. So there's literally nothing for them to do except read the material and play the tapes. The reason for that is it does give a chance for the station to reshuffle the stories, approach them from a different angle, and in the case of uh, several major supervisor stories, I can do a wrap about one subject and then the station can cover the other two subjects by use of the scripts and the tapes. Did it wake? Okay. So as we uh, listen to the meeting, I take notes, sometimes mental notes, sometimes actual pen and paper notes and uh, just register it all away. I must say that I, my own particular method of working is to usually commit most things to memory, not that I have some fantastic memory, but I get an impression of what's important and not important at the meeting and what's interesting and not interesting, and that helps me later. I just go to those stories and do it. But it is uh, essential to tape and keep an accurate record because they do have a tendency to vote on something and then come back later and change that vote. Without objection, the resolution will be adopted. Well, most of, uh, I might add, maybe even one of the appeals of the business of covering City Hall is that you do tend to deal with the very top people. Uh, and 
the, the mayor of San Francisco says, hi, Jim, you know, we're not friends, but we work together so much that there is that uh, camaraderie that exists. And so that's kind of interesting. You see well-known individuals in all lights and in all moods. And uh, there is a good reason, I think, not to get too close to these people because maybe next week you'll be covering their indictment before a grand jury. Uh, it happens in the nature of this business that sometimes the calls are not always very pleasant. And there are unhappy things that happen to people. And I think there's, as, if not spoken, at least the unwritten trade-off. Look, uh, you know, we'll cover this story you have about cleaning up the alleyways in the city on the theory that when the really nasty story comes along, you will also be available for that one too. And it usually works. I, I don't know of any time we've ever been stiffed by anybody for very long as far as access goes. Because uh, this place gets uh, rather drab and lonely around here at night, at midnight, one o'clock in the morning, I usually just take all my little tapes and go home. Uh, I'm still on duty till 10 or 11 o'clock at night, but it usually takes much longer than that to do the right job. I don't mind that because what's the sense of spending the whole day listening to a meeting, hearing all kinds of interesting reports, and then deciding, well, I haven't got time to do it anymore because my shift is through. So there are a lot of unpaid hours in this particular assignment, uh, but I do it willingly. My day is usually split up. I go out for dinner sometime around 6 or 7 o'clock. I have to pick up my son, he lives with me. And uh, we go home and I will work on the reports at home. So it's a much more casual atmosphere and I probably take longer doing it there than I would if I were here. But by the same token, there is no real time demand because the reports that were of really significant, I've already done live on the air. The other stuff is uh, just being saved until the morning drive time when we have our highest audience. So it's Tuesday morning that a lot of people hear what the supervisors did from the night before. I'm in a uni. Listen, I don't need any to pay the food. You need them. Well, I mean, I, right, I need one, right? Uh, why don't you stand right over there? Why don't I stand here? It's easier that way. I don't get anything behind you. What do I press? This? Yeah, hey, when I'm the one that's taking the picture. Oh, I see. I mean, oh. I'm having the picture of me. Now you have to adjust the circle. Every uh, year, you're supposed to go down to the police department and get a new press pass. And uh, together with your application, you're supposed to have a little photograph. And for some reason, I've never been able to remember to take my little photograph down. So I brought along a camera to give to the police department public relations officer who then took my picture so that he would have the small picture for my press pass, which was only three and a half months late this year. Hmm. Well, there's a magazine in there, but it's an empty magazine. Very clever. <laughs> Don't go away, folks. Let's try it again and see what happens. Thank you. If they're a disaster, I'll come and get you. Thank you. In the specific instance of the police commission, there is a public address system so that every, each member of the commission and the chief of police and the lieutenant who handles the meeting and the public speaks into a microphone that is heard not only in the room, but that whole thing is taped. So nothing at all now. There was just some minor problem that uh, had not been cleared up that night. And I thought we could overcome some of the problems by rearranging their wires for them and getting the thing to work. Well, I think it's born mostly out of the fact that I'm in radio and I would suspect anybody who doesn't have a thorough knowledge of electronics and audio reproduction because that's the tools we work with. I have to have a microphone and a tape recorder to do my job, or at least to make it sound more interesting. So it's just experience, training, 
background in dealing with it all the time. I, it just happens that personally I have a super awareness and concern for good sound and it bothers me when things don't work so I automatically sort of aim for the <laughs> problem area and try to work it out. I get to plug this thing in and then I can't figure out why nothing is working. Item 2, presentation of Medal of Valor Awards and Certificates. The police commission is a, I think, an excellent example of uh, government in action. These are five citizens who are literally in total control of the police department. And the meeting we went to, there were only three members of the five there. Uh, three constitutes a quorum. And they have enormous power, and they really are the best kind of civilian review board. And I've often wondered why it is that people are always chanting for a civilian review board when they have it. They run the department. Is this a uh, is this a, a carry out restaurant or a, a sit well down? we're we're uh, trying to make it more sitting now we have sitting what is your people, seating thirty people sitting now I think I'm looking for something interesting yeah, no. to happen and to be decided no, and uh, that is so terribly subjective in so many ways that. Uh, I sort of feel an extra responsibility because of it. If the average person comes down to any kind of meeting, including the police commission, uh, they're there for their own purposes or for their own interests. Uh, when I go there, it's something that's going to wind up on the radio and there are going to be a lot of people hear it. Uh, I don't worry about presenting the proper image of the department, that's up to them. But I do worry about some kind of balance. Well, as far as our legal staff, was there any discussions with does Sergeant Hebel talk to you about a continuance? I don't believe there was discussion about that. I think the discussion was about uh, the 4.30 matter. A lot of this job uh, entails walking somewhere and waiting somewhere. There's, uh, as I mentioned, uh, the time machine aspect to the recording. Uh, re condense everything down into something that people would listen to. So there is the sitting at the meetings, there is the waiting for meetings that don't start on time, there is the sitting through meetings that never produce one single iota of news. And as far as the reporter is concerned, it was a total waste of time, but you didn't know that until you went to it. But I think the payoff is that people get a little bit of sense of government, they get a little bit of sense of uh, the hucksters out there pushing their wares and all of the other things that we do, uh, recording news conferences, recording speeches by astronauts and industrial titans and mayors and that sort of thing. And if all of it together produces a little bit more awareness of society and some of the nice things that happen as well as the bad, then I think it's worth it. That's the whole idea behind what we do. Uh, and I just wondered if we couldn't set a time and we're not having another hearing. Well, who's going to come? There is a, uh, an intense and very high level of cooperation among all of the radio and television reporters in this city. And uh, so it isn't so much giving each other scoops, it's just we share. There is no reason for everybody to run over to one story and cover it and miss something else going on at the same time. So if I have covered a court trial in which something interesting is happening, I will pass that information on to those reporters who are here and are interested. So there's good rapport. I don't think there's, I can't recall ever having a problem with uh, cooperation among reporters. It's a very good town for that. I know that's different in some cities. A new person might come in and cause a problem for a while, but he's quickly indoctrinated into the ways. Because we all are after the same thing, so there's no reason not being friendly about it. I like radio news coverage because of its immediacy. If something pops here at City Hall, I can be on the air in seconds with a report.
closely allied with that is the thought that nobody else is going to change what I do. Nobody'll uh, report from Hemlin. I don't mean that from an egotistical standpoint, but uh, so often I see really good newspaper reporters write an interesting article, and by the time the various editors at the paper have gotten through with it, it is not only uninteresting, but inaccurate. And then they stick this reporter's byline, his name on it, and he has to suffer all kinds of problems with people because what they told him didn't show up in the paper. That doesn't happen in broadcasting. What I put on the radio goes through without the filtering process. Obviously, if a radio reporter went nuts, I mean, management would remove the reporter, uh, but they would not edit the copy necessarily. They edited by not having it on the air. Being left on hold is one of the favorite pastimes of all street reporters and radio, I guess, but I think this is carrying it beyond the limits of uh, reasonableness. New York Stock Exchange average price per share was up 21 cents. The Dow Jones Industrial Average was up 7.45. And Davis is 7.76. On the American Exchange, the average price per share was up 9 cents. Better Thanks to Today in Business, again. I'm Mitchell Krause, CBS News. Now a live report on a developing story. Well, unfortunately, we were going to have a live report from Jim Hamlin on a developing story. We should be hearing from Jim shortly. KCBS News Time 656. The Moss Landing Commercial Fishermen's Association has posted a five. My union card Friday. expired. But it's the immediacy and it's the ability to see something that you have created come to full expression almost immediately, either live on the air, a very short time tape delay, or the overnight reports that I do. I find that very interesting. I don't know what it is. It must be something in my character about liking to tell stories to people, but uh, it is the thing that I like most to do, and here I am doing it. KCBS News Time 707, and now a live report on a developing story. Jim Hamblin in San Francisco. 22 police officers received special certificates and medals at ceremonies at the Hall of Justice this evening. The Police Commission awards are for acts of valor for police officers singled out for their works of bravery by the captains in each district. This time around, says Police Commissioner Judith Ciani, there's something new. Of the 22 acts of bravery, 13 were in connection with fires in the city, and in some cases, officers saving lives even before the fire department arrived on the scene. That's a switch from the days when the fire department was complaining, only a few months ago, of never even having any police assistance at all. There is a cash award that goes with the congratulations and the certificates for bravery. Jim Hemblin, San Francisco. Well, according to a report in the San Francisco Examiner, the Board of Supervisors has received a proposal calling for a massive reorganization.